temporary speaker uh, is dr santosh kumar santosh kumar temporary keratoporosthesis ass assisted vitreoretinal surgery a ray a ray of hope Uh, is it not there? there? Is it there? Next. Okay, next. Next person is Dr. Rishabh Shah. Outcomes of uh, repeat autologous simple limbal epithelial transplant. Good morning ladies and gentlemen. Today I am going to be discussing the clinical outcomes of repeat simple limbal epithelial transplantation for ocular surface burns. I have no financial interests or conflicts of interest to disclose. So we all know that the stem cells in the limbus are at constant rate of division and they divide and mature and migrate over the corneal surface. Any insult to the limbus in the form of injury or chronic ocular inflammation can lead to stem cell deficiency and result in the loss of corneal transparency. In the setting of limbal stem cell deficiency, we can perform limbal stem cell transplantation and there are various methods of performing the transplantation which include a conjunctival limbal autograft, a cultured limbal epithelial transplantation or a simple limbal epithelial transplantation. So SLET is becoming widely popular and it has been shown to have a success rate of about 76% at a median follow-up of 1.5 years. However, in the most severe cases with, uh, with ocular surface burns, such as patients with symblephron and surface keratinization and lid abnormalities, even SLET fails to achieve any vascular surface. And then we are left with limited surgical options in the setting of a failed SLET. We found only a single case report of a child who had undergone a repeat SLET after the failure of a primary procedure. Outcomes of repeat CLET after a primary failed CLET and a repeat SLET after a primary failed CLET had been reported. This study aims to evaluate the effect effectiveness of a repeat a procedure for a larger sample size. The study was performed at Dr. Shroff Charity Eye Hospital in New Delhi. It was a retrospective case series starting from 1st May 2019 to 31st May 2023. The the, so we chose patients who were undergoing a repeat autologous simple limbal epithelial transplantation performed by a single surgeon with a post-op follow-up of six months. Then the evaluation of outcomes included visual acuity, recur recurrence of the LSCD, complications to the donor eye, and improvement in contact lens fit. The inclusion criteria was patients with uniocular, unilateral ocular surface burns with total LSCDs, and patients with partial LSCD and uh, LSCD resulting from other causes other than ocular surface burns were excluded. The primary outcome was the anatomical outcome, and it was classified as a successful outcome, which achieved an epithelized cornea with so no superficial vascularization and no symblephron, a partial success, which included clearing of the central cornea, reduction of the symblephron, and or, an, or an improvement in contact lens fit, and a failure, which included recurrence of LSED symblephron formation and no improvement in contact lens fit. The secondary outcome measures were functional outcome measures which included changes in visual acuity of the operated eye and the donor eye, any improvement in contact lens fit and any complications of the repeat procedure. So we reported the outcomes in the form of means and proportions and then we draw survival analysis plots based on the outcomes of the study. The results, in total we had 26 patients who underwent a repeat SLET but only 16 met the inclusion criteria of the study. The mean age of the patients was 20 years. The mean duration of the follow-up for this study was 17.3 months. In two of the patients, a repeat slit was performed together with a combined optical penetrating keratoplasty. This is a table that summarizes the demographic characteristics of the study population. I would like to highlight that there, there was one patient who had already undergone an optical penetrating keratoplasty before a second slit procedure. So the results, the primary outcome of the surgery, six patients achieved a successful outcome, that is a avascular epithelized corneal surface, four patients achieved a partial successful outcome, and six patients had a failure after the repeat procedure as well. There were 12 patients who had a preoperative symblephron, and out of these 12, five had a failed outcome, four had a partially successful outcome, and three had a successful outcome. The Kaplan-Meier survival plot analysis showed that the mean uh, time to failure of a repeat procedure was 22 months. 
Among the secondary outcomes, there was visual improvement in six patients, no improvement in visual acuity in six, in six patients attributable to stromal scarring, amblyopia, and PR in accurate status preoperatively. And worsening of vision was noted in four patients, which was because of keratitis following the slit. Improvement in contact lens fit was seen in six patients. There was no change in BCV in any of the donor patient eyes. There were no intraoperative complications noted. The most common complication of the procedure was the failure of the procedure. In one patient, there was a retained fluid under the amniotic membrane within the first week, which was managed conservatively. In one patient, there was focal LSCD at the biopsy site in the donor eye, but there was no change in the visual acuity. Keratitis turned out to be a common complication of the repeat procedure. And uh, three of whom had sterile collimates, while one had a staphylococcal keratitis. In discussion, our stu the stu uh, conclude, please. Okay. I would just like to highlight one point that keratitis turns out to be a free, more frequent out, uh, complication of repeat slit as compared to a primary slit. We hypothesize that because these patients tend to have a, uh, extensive similar front tissue preoperatively, which contributes to the vascular supply of the anterior segment, dissection of this vascular tissue uh, uh, compromises the anterior uh, circular, uh, vascular, supply, vascular supply of the anterior segment and predisposes to keratitis. Thank you. Why uh, amniotic membrane was not, I mean, did you use amniotic membrane yes, with yes. this? Yeah. I, I mentioned that in one yeah. patient there was fluid retained fluid. under the amniotic but membrane. But remaining people, I mean, remaining patients? No, no, we used amniotic membrane in and all with, of the patients. And but with in sleep. one patient there was fluid under the amniotic membrane in the perioperative period. And from where you got this slit? Harvested from? From the other eye. We included patients with unilateral LSCD only for this study. Okay. Thank you, Dr. Rishabh. Uh, was there any modification in the technique of SLET when you repeated it? So, the modification, the primary modification was in the donor eye. We avoided the eye, uh, the part from where the previous biopsy was taken and we chose the area just adjacent to it. With respect to panis dissection, there wasn't much modification, but I would say that dissection of the panis in these cases is more difficult than in primary cases because there's already a lot of fibrosis and these are more severe cases of ocular surface injury. True. You didn't try mucous membrane graft? No. In this series, we have only included patients with who have undergone SLET. Although mucous membrane graft at our center, we mainly use it for patients with lid abnormalities, with secretarial entropion, and not for surface abnormalities. Mm -hmm. So you mentioned at one place that there were 22 months required for full recovery. No, no, no. That was my. Uh, that is a kaplan meier survival curve. 22 months was the median. Uh, time to failure of the procedure. That means 50% of 50% of the repeat procedures failed at 22 months. And after have you the primary surgery? After the second surgery. After my but repeat your, surgery. But uh, your your study your uh, average duration of study was 17 months. Yes, average was 17 months. However, the time to median time to failure was 22 months. 22 so, months. Mm. And have you tried tenon plasty? In this case, plasty, ma'am. Uh, no, at our center we prefer, mostly we do not do tenons plasty unless and until yeah. we do it in patients who present acutely with, uh, with more scleral ischemia. But these are mostly patients who have had multiple years after the injury and the surface is already covered with semblephron. Thank, Thank you. you.